This podcast is produced by the Harwood Productions Podcast Network. To learn more about the network and to find more of our shows, visit us online at www.harwoodpodcast.com. Hey there, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of SketchUp, a 3D Toolbox. I'm Cameron Harris, and this is episode number 10. Today, we're going to be talking about another tool similar to the Move tool that we talked about last time, and that is the Rotate tool, and that's how you rotate things in SketchUp, not surprisingly. Now, it sounds like a very simple tool, but it can be rather deceiving. It's actually rather complex. Let me show you what I mean. So I'll just open up this Rotate tool project I've got here. And as you can see, just working with a simple cube as usual. And um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out where exactly the rotate tool is. Now, it works quite similarly to the move tool. And it actually is right next to it. If you look up in the toolbar here, these two arrows that are kind of twirling around themselves, that is the rotate tool. So if you click on that, that'll select the rotate tool. Of course, you can also um, find it over in the tools palette right here. It's right below the move tool there. Click on it there. But as you might have guessed, my favorite way to get to it is the keyboard shortcut. Now you might think that it would be R for rotate, but it's not. It's actually the letter Q. So if you're in any other tool, just tap the Q key and you can see it automatically switches to the rotate tool. So that's very neat. But uh, now we need to figure out how to use this thing. And it's a little bit daunting at first, because you, as you can see, the cursor kind of turns into uh, the twirly arrows with this big kind of protractor thing uh, hovering around it. And this is where it gets very interesting. The first thing you need to do, just like the move tool, is select the thing that you want to rotate. So first thing you want to do is use the selection tool. And then just remember, single click will select a single surface or line. Double click will select a surface and all of its uh, surrounding lines. And triple clicking selects everything that is connected to that particular point. So that's what we want to do in this case because we want to rotate this whole cube. Let's just zoom out and give ourselves a little bit of space here. And now what we want to do is we want to use the Q key, or however you're most comfortable uh, getting to this rotate tool. Just tap Q. And now let's say we want to rotate it. Um, uh, clockwise, uh, 45 degrees, so we end up with uh, the cube in sort of a diamond orientation. So what you first want to do is you want to figure out where your center of rotation is going to be. So that's the point around the whole thing is going to uh, revolve. Now in my case, I'm going to use uh, this corner right here. Um, but you can see, although it snaps to that corner just fine, I'm having a lot of trouble I, the, the protractor thing keeps changing colors and it's kind of moving all over the place. What's happening there? Well, the protractor is actually smart enough to uh, snap its orientation to whatever face you're hovering over. So you notice when I hover the ro uh, rotate tool over this face here, you notice it turns a bright green and it appears like it's kind of like stenciled into that particular face. But then I hover over this face up here it turns blue, and it looks like it stencils into that face. Over on this one, you got red. What it's doing there is it's basically showing you how it's going to rotate it. So for example, if I were to rotate, I'm just going to do this real quickly here. If I were to rotate from this top, you see it's rotating like that. But if I were to start the click down here, it would rotate like that. And if I were to rotate from here, it rotates like that that. So you got to be careful about uh, the orientation. You'll notice that the colors of uh, the protractor thing are actually uh, matching the axis right here. So you notice that when it's blue, you're going to rotate it around the blue axis. When it's red, you're going to rotate around the red axis. When it's green, you're going to rotate it around the green axis. It's a nice way to uh, keep track of things. But you run into difficulties when you're hovering over a corner or even a line. Unless you're hovering over a face like this, uh, the, the protractor just can't figure out where it wants to snap to. It, you know, depending on where your mouse is, it's just not going to really know which way to rotate. So what you need to do is you need to kind of force it. So what you do is hover over 
face. So for, well, first thing you need to do is figure out which way you want to rotate. In my case, I want it to rotate like this, right? I want to rotate around the blue axis. So I just hover my mouse, my cursor over uh, a surface that is in that particular orientation so that the protractor snaps to it. And what I do is I hold down the shift key. You don't need to click or anything like that. Just hold down the shift key and you'll notice now when I move the protractor over all the other surfaces, it's not snapping to them. It's staying locked into that blue axis. And this works with anything. If I was in the green axis, hold down the shift key, it stays green the entire time. Same with the red. But let's just start with the blue and hold down the shift key. And sometimes you actually need to create a basic cube for reference if you don't have a surface like that around. If you don't have a surface that is uh, in the blue orientation, just create a simple cube, use it as a guideline, rotate, and then you can just delete that cube after you're done. Pretty simple. So now what I want to do is I want to snap to that corner right there and click once. Now I can stop holding the shift key down now because that single click not only sets the axis of rotation, basically, the point around it which it will rotate, but it also sets the orientation as well. So you notice no matter where I go now, that uh, protractor remains blue. So now what I need to do is I just need to kind of figure out where I want to, uh, a second place to grab this. You know, so it's not doing anything right now. I need to do two clicks, one at the point around which I want to rotate. So that's kind of like you like slid a pin down into that, or that's where the hinge is, so to speak. And now you got to figure out where you want to grab it and rotate it around that point. So uh, I like to, I mean, you can click somewhere like in here or something like that, but I really like to start um, at, at right angles or basic angles like I could snap it to this corner over here I would start at a 45 degree angle or I could snap it to this corner right here which would also be very good something like this wouldn't work because you need to be a cer at least you know just you basically need to be a certain distance away from the point of rotation otherwise you click and well weird stuff starts to happen just really doesn't work that way it's best to click there and then get your cursor out just a little ways away it can be on the line or I like to just snap to corners just to give myself a little bit of peace of mind click once and now you're just moving your mouse around you're rotating it and you're in free rotate mode you see how it's just spinning right along that specific point right there as if there were a hinge or a pin or something like that right there and I can position it however I want right now and you'll also notice that uh, as with almost every tool this changes our old friend the dimensions box down the bottom right corner you can see that right now it's changed to angle and right now it says zero because this thing is at its original position we haven't changed it at all but as we start to move it around you can see okay we, we're changing it 9.4 degrees or we're changing it 13.7 degrees. That's all very useful. Uh, but we, as before, we can also enter in our own custom number into here. So like say, for example, we want this thing to be at a perfect 45 degree angle. All we would have to do is type in four five and hit enter. And you can see now we've got this thing rotated at a perfect 45 degree angle. Doesn't get much better than that. But sometimes, you don't need something quite so uh, specific. You don't want to enter in a number. You can do something a tad more basic. Just click, click, and rotate it again. And you'll notice that the protractor, the little blue protractor, has remained. And there are these little tick marks in it, almost like guides. Those tick marks are at every 15 degrees. So it's really helpful because those 15 degrees equal out to 45 degrees, 90 degrees, 100 and, uh, 180 degrees as well as 360 degrees and all those units in between all the basic things and if you if your cursor is out here you can position the angle wherever you want but if you move in side that ring of the protractor you can snap to those 15 degree increments and you can see right now if you look at the angle box again 0 degrees 15 degrees 30 degrees 45 degrees right there. So I don't need to touch the keyboard at all. I can do that all with the mouse. So that's very neat. Now let's get something a little bit more advanced. Let's create some kind of a weird shape over here. I'll just create a, using the rectangle and the push-pull tool, I'll just create a, a nice little 
wall right here and I'm going to use the rotate tool to rotate this wall like that and you can see the angle box says that I've rotated it 69.6 .6 degrees but let's say that I didn't know that let's say that I'm not sure what angle this is I just connected two points or whatever and I want this cube to be at the same angle as this wall right here how could I do that well it's actually um, pretty simple all you have to do is select the cube go into the rotate tool hold down the shift key to lock your orientation click the point around which you want to rotate click on this guy right here an endpoint and then snapping still works okay snapping still works in the rotate tool so what I could do for example is I could snap to that corner and you can see now it actually gives me a little bit of a preview you can see that I am now facing basically the orientation of that front wall of the cube is facing directly at that point now it's not lining up perfectly with the wall you can't really do that if you wanted to do that what you would do is you would use the move tool grab the move tool in fact let's grab it from this point move over here line up that point right there so those corners are touching and then use the rotate tool grab from this point now that's like a hinge click and then you can see that it actually lets me snap you can see 69.7 degrees it actually has automatically snapped so that it's at the same rotation same orientation as that wall now of course I can also do a thing where I could just hover over this point here and you can see they're now perfectly flush if I just click that you can see they line up perfectly snapping while you're rotating is a little bit complex it's uh, it requires a little bit more thinking than something like the move tool but um, it really is quite powerful now there's one last thing one last trick with the rotate tool that I want to share with you and that is that just like the move tool it has a copy feature built in now it doesn't make much sense to have a copy feature built into it does it but let me explain what that means so normally if I use the Q key to get into the rotate tool hold down shift to lock my orientation click at that point click at this point and now I'm rotating this okay I am rotating that original cube but if before I start to rotate I tap the option key you can see I get a little plus symbol at my cursor and now I just do the same exact thing hold down shift lock my orientation click click look what happens I'm pulling away an exact duplicate of that cube and I'm rotating it around that corner now what's cool about this is that I can then use the snapping to you can see it snaps right there so that they're right next to each other of course you could achieve that with the move tool but something that would be a little bit trickier to do with the move tool is something like this you can see it snaps and now I've got these two cubes that are joined at the corner right there and they're both in the exact same orientation that would have taken several steps to do with the move tool but it takes only one step to do it with the rotate tool that's really a very powerful tool slightly more complex than the others but um, I think you'll get a lot out of it and that is all you could ever possibly want to know about the rotate tool so I hope you enjoyed this episode. Next week, we're going to be talking about something called the Tape Measure Tool. But until then, you can visit us online at www.harwoodpodcast.com. There you can find our show notes and our forums, comments, all that kind of good stuff. And you can also send me an email if you have any questions or comments about the show. That is at harwoodpodcast at comcast.net. Until next time, I'll just say goodbye and good modeling. Good modeling.